Well, hey there. Welcome to the Authentic Online Marketing Podcast. I'm your host, Ruthie Gray. And if you struggle to make reels, this show is for you. In today's session, I interviewed three of my Authentic Online Marketing School students. Kathy, the retired empty nester who focuses on learning, serving, and having fun. Suzanne of Suzanne Joffrey on Beauty for the Midlife Woman. And Jennifer of Jennifer Cicada, helping do more women slow down and live with God-given grace. And those are all their usernames on Instagram. You want to go look them up and follow them. But each of these women shared how they've integrated authentic reels into their online marketing strategies. They've learned how to reach their target audiences through education, personal insights, and even a touch of humor. You'll find that they weren't always good at reels. In fact, they were quite intimidated at the beginning. And they are very upfront and honest with their journey and struggle with reels and how they came to embrace reels in their own authentic, unique voices and also find a posting rhythm that is comfortable to them. Now, in this previously recorded training, I ask each of these women three questions. How do you use reels to reach your target audience? How often do you post? And what was your perception of reels before you learned to use them in your own authentic voice. You're going to hear all that and more. And I believe that this will help you kind of get your own sense of how to present reels in your own authentic voice and ideas for how you can present reels in a way that's more natural for you, or at least get going and gain some traction on it. Are you ready? Listen in. Welcome to Authentic Online Marketing with Ruthie Gray. Growing awareness for your blog, podcast, book, or product involves more than dancing to reels and yelling, buy my thing. This show models quality over clamor so you can put your spin on your message and market in a way that feels authentic to you because nobody wants to sound like an infomercial. And now here's your host, Ruthie Gray. So Suzanne, Kathy, and Jennifer Cicada, they have been with me for a while. They've taken my trainings, Authentic Online Marketing School, and Mm -hmm. they have gotten into a rhythm, which actually, by the way, Suzanne, which she refused to do reels at the beginning. So I just want y'all to know she does a reel every day now. (laughs) You don't have to do a reel every day, but she just does them in her sleep now. They've both (laughs) figured out a way, though, to do reels in their own authentic voice. These three people, none of their reels are the same. They don't have the same method. They don't do the same things, but their reels are presented by them and their brand in their own authentic voice, which is wonderful. And they're happy with it. They have a rhythm now. I ask in my polls, in my Instagram story polls, do you post reels? Are you comfortable with reels? And some of the people said, Yes, I found a rhythm. And some people said, no, they just overwhelmed me. And the people that said, yes, I found a rhythm are the people that have been in my trainings. <laughs> so it does work. Kathy, how are you using Reels to reach your target audience? I'm retired empty nester and I post content about thriving in those years through learning, service, and having fun. So a lot of my Reels are showing experiences. Like I I went with some girlfriends to this little town and had pie for National Pie Day. And so it was a bunch of still pictures and videos that I put together in a reel with a little Texas music. So a lot of experiences. Then if I have just information I want to get out, like we celebrated Law Enforcement Appreciation Day as a service day. So I did 10 ways to thank a police officer. So instead of making it a carousel post, which would have been perfectly fine, what I would use for carousel post, I turn that into a reel, which is like one slide after the other. And then I'm kind of trying to do um, lately some of those, like Ruthie, you had one the other day where you're washing dishes. You're just doing your regular thing, but you had your message, like what's holding you back from reel, see the caption or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. To me, that would be so easy to do. 
I wash dishes 105 times a day. You know, I'm probably doing reels for three fourths of my content other than story. And I only post three times a week. I only work on my social media posts on Monday. So whatever doesn't get done on Monday, we don't. And that's how I'm keeping from getting overwhelmed. And that has really freed me up. And I will tell you, I had just a personal coaching session with Ruthie at the end of October. But I have gained about 100 followers since then. And I am posting in the feed or reels less than I was before. Here's the thing about reels. If you want your reel to take off, reels are for your followers see them, but it's broader exposure. Like it shows you to more people who aren't your followers. And honestly, the four to seven second time span are the most powerful. They're going to make get the most reach. So if you go and look at that post of mine that I did a couple of days ago that Kathy was talking about, it was just me doing dishes. It had like sort of a darker filter on it. I just selected the filter in Instagram and it had white letters. Here's why you're not getting engagement on Instagram. And then it said, you're not engaging. Here's why. And then they read the caption and the caption was a story. I told a story and I got so much engagement on that. People love stories. That's just a easy way to do that. But Suzanne, why don't you share the answer to this question? How are you using Reels to reach your target audience? As Ruthie mentioned, when I first started doing Reels, I was, I mean, well, at first I was like, Reels, you mean I have to be on video? I mean, I'm like, I'm a creative. I love to post pictures. At the time, I was selling jewelry, and so I loved making pictures and selling and promoting it that way. But when um, I first started with Ruthie and reels were just starting, I was like, oh, no, I don't, I don't even really want to show my face. Are you kidding me? But as I dove into it, I love the creativity of Instagram. And so, you know, at first I was doing all the pointy things and, you know, a little bit of dancing and, you know, getting my message across. But how I use it to talk to my target audience is I do a lot of education about beauty things, hair, makeup, skincare, but I do it mostly through education and I like to add a little fun here and there. So, you know, that's it is that you kind of figure out who you're talking to and the things that you post about are things that they want to know. And there are a lot of ways to figure out what your audience wants to know. And that's what you're going to target. You're going to target who you're talking to and the pain problems that they have and how you can address those for them. So she said something really key there. So the question is, how do you use reels to reach your target audience? You got to know who your target audience is. It's not just like all women. It's got to be somebody. Is it women in their 40s who are cat groomers? You know, that's really niche. It's better if you can niche. It's painful and it's hard to niche, but it's better. Know your target audience, basically. Number two, Kathy, how did how often do you post reels? I think you already answered this. Yeah. So if I do three posts a week, I'll do two or three reels. And yeah. so then the other one is probably just a, a graphic or a photo, right? Yeah, or a still post or something like that. Right. And it just depends on some information lends itself better to a static mm-hmm. post or a carousel. And like you, you're telling us to use all the neighborhoods. I need to do a little bit of live video that will in turn become a reel. Mm-hmm. So I've got that on the docket too. What Kathy's talking about is the neighborhoods on Instagram, there are different ways to use video and still photos. Like Kathy pops in some still photos on her reel, which is a really easy way to do a reel. You've got the feed where you can have your photos or your reels. Then you've got stories. They only live for 24 hours. And that's where you can do your experimenting and you can do behind the scenes and you could do polls and just get to know your audience. They get to know you behind the scenes. If you don't know what I'm talking about, watch my stories and you'll see. And then there is there's live video, which you can go live and your audience can talk back, you know, like type in and stuff like that. It's very interactive. You can go live with a friend that gives you more exposure. All of her friends see she's live. All your friends see you're live. You combine audiences. But you need to know 
that lives turn into reels. Once you post them after you're done, they turn into reels. All right, number three, Kathy, what was your perception of reels before you learned how to use them in your own authentic voice? I do not want to learn one more stupid thing about Instagram. Because <laughs> I, I learned about IGTV. I had to learn about stories. I'm like, what is this? But at first, it seemed like all everybody was doing is either dancing or lip syncing. Mm-hmm. That was kind of the thing. Mm-hmm. I can do, I don't really particularly mind doing those things. I just didn't know how I was going to do. I, there was no connect with what I was promoting at the time and how to do that. But as we have seen, it has evolved in a number of different ways that you can choose for your brand. Yeah, for sure. What about you, Suzanne? Yeah, I've definitely evolved from, you know, I did some of the lip syncing and some of the, you know, I thought it was fun, but definitely have evolved to being a lot more comfortable just doing, you know, speaking my voice. And like one I did today was about a series that I'm starting. So you know, and I just talked to the camera and, you know, got my point across. I've been on Instagram for, I don't know, eight years. And it is also a long game. You know, you get out there and you follow other people and they follow you back and you build a community the way Ruthie always talks about. And so you just get a lot more comfortable and you'll grow. Consider where you are today, five years from now, you'll be, it'll just be old hat and you'll be doing it, you know, all the time. So Jennifer, how are you using Reels to reach your target audience? A variety of ways. The primary way is educationally. I usually give a devotion once a week or once every couple of weeks. Those are a little bit longer Reels where I do a recording and I put them up as a post. They get changed to a Reel. So that's one way. Another way is a prayer is a big part of my ministry. And so I put a reel together that will throw a prayer up. Usually it'll come off the side or one other way, but it's continually playing as people are reading the caption and praying it through. Sometimes I'm using my voice in the reel or sometimes the words will just appear themselves and it's not my voice. So I use it both ways and I create those primarily in Canva. And then the other big way that I use Reels is something funny happens in our family life. Maybe we're playing a game or we're cooking in the kitchen or we are creating something together. And so I will create a 15 or 20 second quick clip and then I will post it with a short caption underneath and it gives people a little bit of insight into me as a person and not just Mm -hmm. someone who's ministering to them. And so I would say I use it personally. I use it for education. I'll do a devotion or a prayer or a brief teaching. Suzanne is terrific at this. She will teach something about her product in seven or eight seconds and put a great caption underneath. And that reel will keep playing over and over again. I have started to do that in talking about grace. This is what grace is. This is what grace is not. And I'll make a quick seven second reel with a longer caption below. And that reel keeps playing during the time that they're reading the caption. And that, if you will, gives me a little more time that people are on my feed and looking Mm -hmm. at the reel. Let me ask you this. So how often do you post reels weekly? At least twice a week. But I was doing something special, I was at a conference, or I've noticed on holidays, I tend to do three or four reels because they attract people's attention a lot more. And I find them to be more fun. I can't believe I'm saying that. But they're quick and they're fun and they're relatively easy for me now. And so if there's a special event, I know people are more likely to watch that than they are to read through a long post. Mm -hmm. So almost always twice a week, but sometimes three or four times. So on the heels of something you just said, you can't believe you're saying that. What was your perception before of Reels and how how has that changed that you can use them in your own authentic voice? I'm just going to be honest. I hated doing Reels. I was intimidated by them. I did not want to do them. I knew they were important, but I thought there has to be a better way. My first Reel, I'm not kidding, took 28 takes. Nobody can keep up with that. It was horrible. But I kept trying. And eventually 28 went to 20. 
eventually went to 15, eventually went to 10. And the reel I just put up, I took two takes because I got tired of myself trying to figure it all out Mm -hmm. and make it perfect. My brand is all about grace in your real life. Well, how can I communicate that if I'm taking 28 takes to make it perfect? So that was the pressure that came off for me. I moved from intimidation to being willing to try to now I actually, I guess I could say, I actually do kind of enjoy doing them because they're fun. You can do lots of different things with them. I didn't know you could do. Yeah, there's so many ways you can be creative. The reason that I wanted to interview these these three is because it's not just me. I'm not the only one that knows how to do this. These people learned and they learned how to do it with authenticity so that they don't have to dance and point if they don't want to. It is a great tool. So we just wanted to kind of clear up the mystery just a little bit. Ruthie, can I say one more thing real quick? The authenticity part, the part of the intimidation is in the beginning, I looked at Suzanne's reels and I thought I could never do that. So here's the freedom. You don't have to be Suzanne. You don't have to do Suzanne's reels. When I stepped back and watched what she was doing and tried to figure out how can I use that for my brand and my message, that's when I became more comfortable with reels. Mm -hmm. I learned how she was using them and I learned techniques from her, but I worked on using them for my purposes and not trying to parrot hers. And let me address what Crystal said. What I'm hearing, I think, is to use reels to address pain points and questions that our audience would be asking. That is super helpful to think about what to post. It can be encouragement, too, or it can even be funny. I do all three. Usually, I say be encouraging, educational, or entertaining, or a mix of all three. Whatever you are, don't try to force entertainment if that's not you. Whatever is the best feel for you is what you want to do. I hope this episode kind of took the pressure off of you to stop forcing yourself to do maybe reels that seem forced or unnatural or doing something that just really just feels icky and awful. And start experimenting with ways and ideas that you can do reels in your own voice. So wrapping up, the takeaways are, number one, these women were intimidated by reels at first. They didn't want to show their faces. They thought the reels took too much time to create. But here's the thing. They kept trying. They didn't give up and kept drawing from our community and being active, asking for help, that helped them push forward. So if you can be part of a community or a share thread or a network that is regularly showing up on Instagram or Facebook or wherever you are, that is really going to help you to tap in and draw from them. We have our own free community. It is a Facebook group called Authentic Instagram Engagement. You can request to join. We will also put the link in our show notes. We have space for questions there that other community members can enter in and help you with. We have a weekly share thread. We have a nice little cozy community there. So come on over and join us. Number two takeaway is stay on your own timeline and use the time that you have. Study what others are doing and then translate that into how you could incorporate it with one or two reels a week. It doesn't have to be every day. It doesn't have to be every other day. Only you know how much time you have. We just want to encourage you to start doing it and try to shoot for at least one a week. If that's all you can do, just do one a week. But try to get in a constant habit of posting because consistency is key. You know that old saying that says aim for nothing and you'll hit it every time. That applies here. And then finally, number three, address pain points and questions that your ideal audience may be having. I realize that this is a struggle. It's hard to get started, but you're not alone in feeling that way. And if you can get ideas from these ladies, lean in and watch them and then go tap in on the reels in your own feed and just look and see what's trending. Look at sounds and watch what people are doing. It doesn't have to be hard. 
And I'm going to say this again. I know I've said it before, but the simple four to seven second reels will get you way more reach than the longer reels. Yes, I think you should talk on reels and teach concepts or share beliefs or values that could touch other people and speak to them or encourage them and bless them or help them in their struggle. But I also do believe there is a space for those four to seven second reels where you can get just one core concept across that somebody could take home and that will get more eyes on your content. Thank you for listening today. And I want to say that I had hinted in a previous episode earlier to a big announcement we had coming up. And friend, there is no big announcement. The Lord led me in a different direction. We thought we were going to go one way for you, possibly open up a membership, but that is not where God would have me focus right now. If you want a little bit deeper insight into my thoughts and processes, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my private podcast where I'm going to share a little bit more about my change in trajectory and how God has been leading and hopefully some encouragement for you when you feel like maybe you're doing all the things and you're on a hamster wheel and you just want to get off. I think you'll be encouraged from what you hear there. So join me over there at my private podcast, 2024 Marketing for Creatives. We'll leave a link in the show notes for that as well. Until next time, be encouraged that you can do reels in your own authentic voice. I know you can. Try it and see. See.